Welcome to Module 4 of Foundations of Digital Teaching and Learning Technologies. I'm Janet Simmons, and in this video, we'll briefly explore the history of personal computing devices. This video will look at a number of revolutionary computer changes. Between the analysis and synthesis questions, we'll examine command line interfaces, some of the first home computers, and look at two of the largest computing companies in the world, Apple and Microsoft. And then we'll finish up with a brief look at open source operating systems. There are four analysis questions for this video. You will need to watch the support videos to adequately answer these questions. These questions are also asked to help you focus on key areas of the video. In a previous module, we found that interactions between humans and mainframe computers were primarily through punch cards and paper tape. When terminals were introduced, it then became possible to send commands to the memory cache prior to processing, so that programs could be entered and run directly from the keyboard. With the introduction of Microsoft Disk Operating System, or DOS for short, the command line interface became the standard method of sending commands into the processing unit. The command interface, or CLI, required the user to be familiar with numerous commands. Consequently, many people found computers with the CLI too difficult to operate and limited in terms of overall functionality. In 1973, the first personal computer, the Xerox Alto, was created and approximately 2,000 were produced. It's seen here on your left. It had a mouse-driven semi-graphic user interface which required commands to be entered from time to time. The computer consisted of a black and white cathode ray tube or CRT display, a detachable keyboard, a three button mouse, and a 2.5 megabyte hard drive housed in a processing unit the size of a small refrigerator. Alto's programming also allowed for WYSIWYG, which is an acronym for what you see is what you get. This is the first computer to allow users to see on the computer screen what a document will look like when it's printed. Prior to the Alto, users had to insert code tags for layout and text. For example, codes were used to indent, set margins, and create bold and italicized font. Early computers such as the Altair 8000 and the Heathkit H8 were developed primarily in kit format. These kits were ordered through the mail and individuals with an interest in dabbling in electronics would use them. These machines were built around central processing units and transistors. The 1980s saw the evolution of home computing. Markets for computers developed as they became more capable and as their usefulness at accomplishing tasks increased. Retail stores which sold a variety of computers began to appear. Among the first personal computers to appear were the Atari systems and a variety of machines from the Amiga to Commodore, which included the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64. The Commodore VIC-20 was my first computer. The CPU was inside the plastic box that holds the keyboard, and it was hooked up to my TV, which was a floor console model. Data was saved on cassette tapes. You could buy game cartridges that fit into a slot in the back of the keyboard, but these were expensive, so I bought computer magazines, such as Compute Gazette, and typed in the code for all the games I played. I later upgraded to a Commodore 128, where I used my first word processing program called Paperclip, and saved data on 5.5 inch floppy disks. There were severe restrictions on what I could do. This held a limited amount of data, and I had to swap out often. Paperclip also had its limits. I remember working on a document and suddenly it wouldn't let me type anymore. Apparently I had reached the character limit. The first Apple computer was made available in 1976. Similar to the Altair 8000, it required the user to assemble it. The user had to build a case such as this wooden one. It also needed a power supply transformer, a power switch, keyboard, and video display or monitor. Headquarters for the Apple Computing Company was in Steve Jobs' parents' garage. This is where Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak designed and built the machines. The Apple II computer, released in 1977, was mass-produced using plastic housing that had a removable lid, and this allowed access to the motherboard and a series of slots, which supported the addition of daughter boards. These provided peripheral devices functionality. This setup allowed for manipulation of the daughter boards, to provide support for a number of different proprietary functions. 
In 1984, Apple released its first Macintosh computer. Apple computers came with their own proprietary version of an operating system, which over time developed into the highly innovative OS. The first models sold between $1,995 and $2,495, which when calculated for inflation is over $5,000 today. The Mac was revolutionary because it had a graphic interface as opposed to textual commands on the desktop. The tiny memory was a hindrance to many users. It had a 128 kilobyte hard drive, which was tiny compared to the 400 kilobyte at three and a half inch disc could hold. However, Mac soon became a favorite of desktop publishers as software companies such as Adobe began creating design software that worked very well with graphical interfaces. Macs have continuously evolved and Apple is often seen as an innovative company that perfects technology for the masses. For example, this includes retina displays and touchscreens. Currently, Apple is known much for the aesthetic design of its machine, as is the quality of the OS and the hardware it runs on. Microsoft is currently the world's largest software maker by revenue. The story began in 1980 when Bill Gates and Paul Allen won the contract to create a new operating system for IBM. The OS was DOS. With the success of DOS, the company quickly expanded into new markets. In 1983, it released its first piece of computer hardware, the Microsoft Mouse. Since the release of Windows 3.0 to today's Windows 10, Microsoft has steadily moved towards a graphic interface and incorporates touchscreen in many of its software and devices. The iconic Microsoft Office, which was first released in 1990, contains Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. It is arguably the most influential software package ever released. It standardized many computer functions and continues to influence how we communicate today. Microsoft continues to diversify. For example, in 2011, it acquired Skype. In 2012, it released Surface, its first computer. And in 2016, it acquired LinkedIn. Some of the original sharing of ideas and innovations, which were present during the initial days of the creation of personal computers, still lingers. SourceForge is a business incubator that represents online communities that present development projects under the banner of open source program development. Open source software projects offer their source code to the general public, usually using some sort of licensing, such as GNU General Public License to use, copy, study, change, and improve, but it's also free of charge. This is similar to Creative Commons licenses. The community becomes responsible for the development and maintenance of the software. This word cloud illustrates a wide variety of operating systems developed under this model. Linux is probably the most widely known version of open source operating systems. Ubuntu and Red Hat versions of Linux are examples of open source operating systems that have been modified to support certain industries and groups of people. To some extent, open source program development has eaten into the business plans of Microsoft and Apple. Other open source projects such as Android, Mozilla Firefox, and OpenOffice continue to offer mainstream alternatives to the offerings of those of proprietary companies. There are three synthesis questions for this video. These questions are designed to help you connect with the material and concepts presented in this video. Don't forget to use the discussion forum to talk about your ideas with your classmates. This video is an extremely brief look at some of the important developments in the recent history of computers. In terms of history, computers such as we use today are in their infancy. You will need to have a better understanding of the history of computers to successfully complete the PBL assignments. Our Blackboard site contains links to videos and websites that explore the evolution of many of these topics covered in this video. The explosion of creativity and engineering by pioneers such as Bill Gates and Steve Jobs continues to influence how we work and play with computers. This also provides us with the foundations of digital teaching and learning. Thanks for watching. <music>